The monkey and the hunter is one of the classic demonstrations of basic physics. Here's the setup. Over on one side, you've got the monkey. He's just hanging out in a tree, minding his own business. He doesn't know it, but he's about to have a very bad day. Down here on the ground, some distance away, we have a man in a big yellow hat with a high-powered rifle. He's finally got tired of that monkey's monkey shines, and he's decided to do something about it. The hunter knows that as soon as the monkey sees the muzzle flash, he'll let go of the branch and drop, trying to dodge the bullet. What the hunter wants to know is, where should he aim? Should he aim above the monkey? Since he is firing upwards, he reasons that his bullet will drop to meet the monkey. Should he aim below the monkey? The bullet and the monkey are both dropping, but this way the monkey should drop into the bullet's path. Or should he aim right at the center of monkey mass and hope that the bullet and the monkey meet up in space? The distance is enough that it'll take several seconds for the bullet to get to the monkey, but not far enough that the monkey can get to the ground, run away, and wage guerrilla warfare against the hunter. So where does he aim? Many students will correctly guess that you aim at the monkey. Because vertical and horizontal movement are independent, the monkey and the bullet will both drop at the same rate and meet up in midair. You've got an ex-monkey. The tricky part is showing that in the classroom. The demonstration itself is fussy, it's fidgety. There are a lot of moving parts and a lot of ways that it can go wrong. There are videos available on the internet, of course, and you can buy a professionally made monkey and hunter rig for several hundred dollars. But in order to pull this off on a budget in this classroom, we're going to have to MacGyver the heck out of this thing. To release the monkey, I'm going to use an electromagnet. When the electromagnet circuit is cut, the magnet turns off and the monkey immediately drops. To trigger that, we're going to need some sort of a switch. You could buy an expensive photo gate. I'm going to go with a strip of aluminum foil. When the dart is fired from the dart gun, the foil is broken, the circuit is switched off, and the monkey drops. The whole rig is set up at the front of the classroom on a pair of large floor stands. We're going to need some way to mount the battery pack. Yeah, that doesn't look sketchy at all. And since I'm putting about 12 volts drawn from 8 D cells through this thing, those thin wires are going to overheat pretty fast, so we'll add a switch so that the whole thing can be energized only at the last minute. And the last thing we need, we need to recruit a monkey. All right, he'll do. With all the pieces in place, all that's left is to energize the circuit, attach the monkey, aim and load the gun, and give it a try. The rig worked pretty well on its first try. Let's try a few more runs to get some really good slow motion footage. The dart and the monkey fall at the same pace. The dart's horizontal motion doesn't change the fact that it's falling and gaining distance at d equals 1 half at squared, just like the monkey. Now, in the classic setup, the hunter is firing upwards. Should that make a difference? Let's try it and find out. First, we adjust the aim a little bit, then energize the circuit, attach the monkey, load the gun, and let her rip. So there you go, no difference at all. As the monkey drops from his perch, the dart drops from the path it would have followed if there was no gravity. When the monkey has fallen, say, a meter from his perch, the bullet has fallen a meter from the spot that the hunter was aiming at, whether he was aiming up, down, or horizontally. But what about the poor monkey? What would all of this look like from the monkey's point of view? To find out, I built another target, this one with a GoPro camera attached. When we drop it from the electromagnetic release, we should get a monkey's eye view of the approaching dart. And there you have it. Even though we know the dart is following a parabolic path through the air, from the monkey's point of view, it looks like it's approaching dead on. In the monkey's falling frame of reference, the dart following a parabolic path looks like it's following a straight line to its target. The end result is the same. Vertical and horizontal motion are independent, and the bullet and the falling target accelerate downwards at the same rate, and George is no longer curious. The point of all of this is, the independence of vertical and horizontal motion means that projectile motion problems can be solved fairly simply. You use the equations of accelerated motion, distance is 1 half at squared, and velocity is acceleration times time, to solve for how long the projectile is going to be in the air. Then you use the simple equations of unaccelerated motion, distance is velocity times time, to find out how far the projectile goes. Break the problem down, solve it in separate steps, and it's as easy as falling out of a tree. Sorry. <laughs>